Foot Clan, we are into the AFC West on today's divisional breakdown, and what an exciting division. So many fantasy football options. Make sure you like the video, subscribe. We're talking news. Jason's breaking out some sleeper picks. You don't want to miss a minute. Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Goo goo ka Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, July 26th. It's not just any Tuesday. It's not. No, it's just 26th. It's not just any Tuesday the 26th. It's training camp day, baby. Every team will be at training camp today. Oh boy. Are you ready for it? I am very ready for it. Let's all of us from the, re- the reporters this, and the reports. Yes. At this table and those of us at the fourth seat of the table listening in, let's be discerning over the next few weeks. There's going to be a, a lot of stupid information coming out and we're going to love it and we're going to talk about it. And then let's just in one ear out the other for most of this. I stuff. have my runes of protection. Nice. I've oh, got, really? Yeah, I've got those on the players that uh, <laughs> I prefer. Not every look. They're only so powerful, man. I have to. Oh, gotta, you put the runes on the players you want to hang around. Yeah, I like gotta, your dynasty look, roster. I got to divvy them up for <laughs> you know personal gain. I thought we needed the runes to protect us from the false reporting. Oh, yeah, those two. That would have been That's, the smarter approach. But I, I like. But that. he used them all up on the players he liked. <laughs> I know. Well, the, the, get your own runes. What I find is is uh, it's more believable to me the reports about my players doing well. Yes, and of the course, other ones are course. are easily dismissible. Yes. <laughs> like, well, that's just coach speak. Yeah, right. Uh, well, we will we'll try to be objective. That's why there's three of us because the one that is not objective can get corrected by the two that don't have that player on their team. Yes. So uh, welcome in. Excited to be with you. We are almost to that part of the year where we are five shows a week. That begins in August. And uh, lots to talk about wrapping up our divisional breakdown episodes. AFC West on today's show. We have some news to talk about. We are also going to be live in Los Angeles. Uh, We've got a show this week. And we have... This is big. This is big. A little announcement to make. Oh, wait. You said big. A big announcement to make. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It's a big announcement about a little thing. That's kind of true. There are a limited number of tickets that have now been made available to the LA live show. So we opened up a few more tickets. Uh, It had been previously sold out. We're getting really close to the show. We've got a few more that we can open up. So you can go to ballerslive.com, grab them. It is very limited. Yeah, if if you're wanting to be there, I would pause the podcast and go do it right now. Yeah, you're looking at your watch going, what yep. time is this? Is this a Tuesday? I hope it's Tuesday when you're listening and you're in L.A. because then you might be able to get some of the new tickets. But, Join us. But that will be awesome. It's going to be an Ice and Fire episode out there in L.A. Uh, that will release as the podcast on Monday. And so you'll be able to enjoy it even if you are not present and with us. But uh, BallersLive.com if you want to grab those tickets. Oh, yeah, because it comes out on Monday. Yeah. Because it's August. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. Going to need some other runes. Need runes the, of endurance. Yeah, need those smelling salts. Yeah. Now yeah, it's going to be It's gonna be fun. It's going to come quick. And um, I'm looking forward to it. Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can follow Mike at FF Hitman. Jason at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. You can watch the show. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell. Uh, Jason did a, a questionably he went, aw- awkward uh, oh, he wave. Let, he's letting people know there's a big summer blowout. Uh, and then you can find the community at jointhefoot.com where you can find Foot Clan Leagues and 17,000 uh, like-minded fantasy football fanatics over there at jointhefoot.com. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. 
Well, we got this news, uh, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, yeah. Texans rookie wide receiver John Mechie the third was diagnosed with acute uh, promyelocytic promyelocytic yeah. leukemia um, and will likely not be able to play football in 2022. Uh, thoughts and prayers with uh, John Mechie the third as he, I mean, he just suffered a, an ACL uh, tear to end his collegiate career and now has this hurdle. Um, I believe he came out and said this is a treatable form of leukemia and um, he will begin attacking that now. Yeah, we, we hope for a very healthy recovery, obviously. Um, he tweeted out in his uh, personal message that he won't be playing football this year, so that's the most uh, information we have for a Texans team that traded uh, the 68, the 108, the 124 to move up and get him. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a good player. I mean, yes. I think a really good player. Yeah, I think he's I think he's solid, and you know he'll hopefully be back strong with the team next year, and and you know even now without him, their draft pick could be even better. Uh, we have had a number of recent reports and player tweets about Raheem Mostert. Um, a report from ESPN talking about him still recovering from a late season knee injury, and maybe not ready for week one. Uh, Mostert himself has, has hit the Twitter sphere to say he's been cleared to practice and uh, expressing his excitement about coming back from an injury that it sounded like maybe he wasn't going to be able to come back from. Yeah, in his second tweet, he mentioned that the doctor said he might never step back on the football field, but he's very excited that he's gotten the clear, he's back, he's ready. Uh, this is a difficult injury he's coming back from. It is at an advanced age he is, you know, a 30-year-old running back, and so I am not optimistic in general. Regardless of whatever news comes out, whether he is uh, practicing, not practicing, I have not personally drafted him a lot anywhere. Uh, I believe, Andy, you're on the opposite side of that where you've gotten some shares. No, doesn't... no, I'm not. Oh, I, I've, I've taken him have... nowhere. Oh, no. okay. No, I um, have no belief in Raheem Mostert whatsoever this year. Yeah, so, uh, you know, good that he's back. Obviously, he's reunited uh, with Mike Daniel who was the offensive coordinator where he excelled in San Francisco. But I think um, – I, I believe this is Chase Edmonds' job. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a crowded backfield, if you're honest. Uh, Sonny Michelle is there. Miles Gaskin is still on the roster, and you have Mostert mixed in. So um, I don't think Chase Edmonds has had – I think he's got like five career games with more than 13 carries. So is it, maybe this means that Sonny Michelle is going to have a more relevant role on this offense where he was – he was pretty good in L.A. last year. Sure. Do you do you have any – is he a sneaky signing yeah. of any sort if you don't believe in Mostert? No. I, I Maybe like maybe if he's like the goal line running back, but I don't know that he totally fits what they want to do in Miami. I thought the interest, the, the signing was interesting. Uh, he'll, he'll be a name that I'd, I'll monitor, but I'm not like taking a late-round shot on him. Right, not right now. Obviously, with training camp opening up, you have a number of players that, you know, from a medical sense, you're looking at what we knew of their injury and what it was during the end of the year, and then now the reality of it. Are they starting camp on the PUP? Are they recovered from these injuries? The expectations that we had for J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and players like that. James Robinson, Wild, Achilles man. injury, will not be placed on the PUP to start camp. Uh, they're hopeful he'll be cleared by mid-August. I believe I said on the show when we did this division that uh, I had a I just thought that James Robinson is going to be out there this year and and relevant. Uh, how he he carried the bulk of the offensive um, work for this team and the videos I had seen of him working out were encouraging to me. Uh, he's very young, dealing sure. with the injury, so I'm not saying that James Robinson is a fantasy relevant player necessarily, but he may be in as much as he takes away from Travis Etienne and other pieces of the offense. Yeah, the the Cam Akers timeline coming back from the same injury would would certainly put him available for the beginning of the year. But it was it was pretty surprising to have him not uh, placed on the pup to start training camp. So maybe there's a little bit of optimism. I know beat reporters around there still think uh, that he is the primary running back, and medically we are pessimistic because the running back position does not have any history of success for fantasy after this injury ever what's interesting is that you bring up the cam makers timeline is that regardless of cam makers efficiency in those games 
he had all the work. Yeah. So that's where you could get into a situation where you're like, hey, maybe he's not great for fantasy, but if they give him the bulk of the work, you know, it's not like ETN's not coming off of an injury that's problematic as well. So Well the nice thing for James Robinson is he doesn't have to get any explosiveness back. Because he never right. had it. He's, you know, he's a vision. That's so, that's just it's, so rude. It is. It's rude. I mean, like, that he was great. But he wasn't he had an some explosive explosiveness. Athlete. Comparative to other running backs, no, not really. But an excellent player who has proven over multiple years now that he belongs in the in the league after his whole, you know, had to <laughs> scratch and claw his way onto an NFL team. Uh, and for the way I'm looking at James Robinson, I am, I uh, I'm still out. I'm willing to like. I will take that loss if he comes back and he is great, being healthy like enough to do all the things that we've seen on film and actually running into a 300 pound man and being able to do things on NFL field very different. So even if he he's is, free though, even if he's clear, well, eleven he's eleventh round pick. I but there's still guy. I just I don't believe it will happen. I don't think that he's going to have relevance. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I just don't think the cost is is much. We, well, if you need a running back late and you want to be surprised, but it's not just the cost; it's also then the roster clog of like J James Robinson comes out week one, gets twelve carries and and two receptions, and it turned. It's like Mark Ingram from last year, where it's like so much volume that you're excited that you're like, okay, well, I got to hold on to him, and but it's the output is just continues over and over to be so bad on it while cam Akers can have relevance because he's on the rams even if he's inefficient because they're going to score a ton of points the jaguars while they will be better than last year they're not gonna they're not gonna keep pace with the rams in terms of scoring counterpoint okay cam Akers has never really been fantasy relevant james robinson has done it for two years where he's fair actually enough. been very good fair enough uh jameson williams was placed a uh, wide receiver for the lions placed on the non-football injury list he is recovering from an ACL. Yeah, I mean, we nobody is expecting to see him for the beginning of this season. Uh, all right. Uh, other players placed on the PUP to start camp? J.K. Dobbins, Gus oh, Edwards. Man. Christopher, or I'm sorry, Christian, Christian Watson with an undisclosed injury. Uh, David Bell, foot injury. Robert Tunyon with the ACL. So, number one, the Christian Watson one, that is – We'll yeah, like we got to see what happens when you're on the pup in the on the training camp. At any moment, you can come off. But if this guy misses like a bulk of training camp, you you you're, better it's done. For you fantasy. better be weary about drafting Christian Watson, a rookie out of a small school, and thinking he's going to come in and produce. Uh, gives me you know uh, even more confidence that Alan Lazard will be the number one guy. And then the other the other big takeaway here is Dobbins on the pup. How when Ian Rappaport got to tweet out that J.K. Dobbins was in fact on the PUP, there was you there was at least a there's little a twinkle. In the there's eye. a twinkle in the eye when he did that of like my source was right. If he could have bolded that name among the other <laughs> players that he mentioned on Twitter, he would okay. have done it. I'm just making sure we're all we're all aware of the of he, the scenario. He kept it professional. Though. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I actually wait. What it, at the end when he was like, I told you. That wasn't very professional. He deleted all that at the end. Um, <laughs> I will say this. I've taken Randall Cobb with like the last pick sure. of best ball drafts uh, multiple times in the past week. And I have, I have no problem with that. Like, If you're not in on Lazard. That's... You can be in on Lazard and you can still take your yeah. shot there because uh, to me, Lazard is not about – he's not going to go up and put a Devontae Adams season up. Right. And so there is going to be a void. Tunyon's on, <laughs> on the PUP list. So you look around and you say, um, Aaron Jones, anybody? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Julio then, Jones, anybody? Yeah. Possible. And then one more. They, uh, they did work out John Brown, by the way. One more puff piece that came through because speaking of what Andy was saying of when someone says something nice about a player you like, you got to talk about it. Uh-oh. Uh, but Tyler Algier, rookie running back for the Atlanta Falcons. Just a report coming out from The Athletic, Josh Kendall saying there is a scenario where he is the starting running back. Uh, it might come sooner than later. This is not necessarily sounding the horn of always draft Algier late, but he at this point of the process, you need to know that name, be ready to strike if Algier gets uh, more and more esteem heading into the season. 
I thought he was a fantastic prospect coming out of BYU. Didn't get the draft capital that we wanted, but 5'11", 224, he's, he's a big bruising guy that if he is the starter for the Falcons, I think has true value. Yeah, I agree completely. Uh, he's one of the, you know, there's all these fourth round running backs that is like, he was oh, fifth, you're, you're, but, you're hopeful, the, yeah. you know, these day three guys. Uh, but he was one of the few guys that I actually liked the tape. I was yeah. like, oh, I, he, he looks good. Damian Williams in the backfield. Cordero Patterson will have his reps managed. That is what you're looking at in Atlanta. The offense will be interesting to watch there. Let's get divisional. Well, we've already done the NFC West, Mike, and so we're we're going to move on to the AFC West, which is our final opportunity to develop this, you know, wide-reaching drop. We're in the AFC West. <laughs> uh, we're going west. Oh, uh, we're in the AFC West: the Chiefs, the Raiders, the Chargers, the Broncos. Like Jason panders to just like the majority at sure, large. Sure, sure, yeah, and Lions fans and, in particular. Well, just whoever I'm in front of, to right. be fair. And yeah. I mean, we just checked the box for like '90s, twenty contemporary guys out there. <laughs> Christian music, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you with the Michael W. Smith drop. Uh, Chiefs, Raiders, Chargers, Broncos. How excited are you to discuss this high flying division? Very excited. I mean, this this is the division, um, you know, that, not only that, but they're playing the NFC West. The, this is the division where you want the majority of players. There's no team that you talk about here that's a quick discussion or just like, Meh, move on. Right. You've got three great quarterbacks and a very solid offense in the oh, Raiders. No, I, I, look, I'm not oh, saying man. that Derek Carr's not a good quarterback. You said that he's not great. He doesn't yes. deserve to be at the party he, yeah. with the other three. Yeah, not he, even as a plus one. He could be a plus one. Sure, he yeah. can. What if he's like he can come with Devonte? Like he's can he? Well, I was saying like if he rides along with Herbert, can he ride? I mean, can he ride in the front? Yes, he's allowed to go shotgun. Okay. He's, uh, this is not, not an anti Derek Carr take at all, but he is not of the level uh, of these other three quarterbacks in this division who. Uh, you could, can he's, all be all timers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think on an NFL level, he's probably viewed with less severe of a gap as the fantasy community would view him. But there's still a gap. Obviously, you know, I'm not if, saying that he's a better NFL quarterback either, but he is a very good one. A year ago, before Devonte Adams, before the new contract, there were rumors about you know trying to move on. It, he was lumped in with Ryan Tannehill of like a quarterback that could be. Replace now. You go and get his college teammate, get him a long term contract. But we'll we'll get to the we'll get to the Raiders. Surprisingly, second. Yeah, the Chiefs last year twelve and five. Uh, they had a twelve and a half uh, projected win total going into the year. Five and three in one score games, and lost in that battle with Cincinnati in the AFC title game. Their projected win total this year might surprise you. As in low ten and a half. Okay. So to okay. me, that is a um, that is not necessarily speaking to oh you lose Tyreek Hill. To me, that is speaking to the strength of the division and the improvement that Denver has made and the improvement that uh, I believe Las Vegas has made, who won ten games last year. So uh, talking through the offense last year, fourth in points per game, third in total yards, second in pass attempts, sixth in passing touchdowns. We know the story. Patrick Mahomes is a great quarterback. Travis Kelsey. Elite tight end target. But you can't start this discussion for fantasy football purposes without talking about an absence. Mm -hmm. And Tyree Kill is no longer a member of the Chiefs. Tyree Kill is one of one. There's not a player like him in the NFL. And uh, we're going to see Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes put to the test, I think, this year to further develop this offense beyond an aging Travis Kelsey and finding other consistent weapons and moving the football. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value to be had here. Um, there's there's a question mark, right? Who is it? Where do you take your shot? And I think that there are legitimate arguments to be made with most of the players at the receiving in the receiving core. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster has done it before. Yep. 
Uh, Tyree Kill ran the, the slight majority of his routes from the slot. That's where a lot of his value came, and that's kind of where Juju lives. You have a bigger contract going to MVS, and then you have a rookie coming in in Sky Moore. It's ironic with the Christian Watson news. Um, on, on my underdog drafts, I've been drafting a, a, a decent amount of Christian Watson. I have not been drafting Sky Moore, and the reason is because when these rookie injuries pop up in camp, and Sky Moore has been dealing with a hamstring issue through like the the OTAs and the rookie minicamp. I I just feel like oh he's going to start a little bit behind, um, and and Mahomes could click with someone else. But now to have training camps opening, and you have Christian Watson of of the Packers on the POP dealing right. with some undisclosed injury, while now Sky Moore is good to go. It, it's it's interesting to me because you know they Andy Reid is not afraid uh, to use a rookie if the rookie is good. And one of the one of the things that I think is interesting, Mike, and you can speak to some of these other names, but what makes it difficult for me to analyze this offense for fantasy uh, purposes is you legitimately have five names that are all associated with negative emotions in the fantasy world. Sure. Clyde. Yeah. Disappointment. Ronald Jones. Disappointment. Right? Juju. Disappointment. Yeah. MVS. Disappointment. So... And we've seen them bring in retreads before. We saw them bring in Sammy Watkins and try to get him involved. We've seen them bring in Josh Gordon and try to get him involved. So LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy. There have been a lot of these formerly well thought of but then have gone negative situations. And I say all that to say maybe Sky Moore is really some a direction we should be pointing our attention to a little bit more. But I know that you are you are certainly bullish on MBS right. and his opportunity. Yeah, I, I like MVS. Number one, I'm just following the actions of the team. Of He was the largest uh, contract that they gave out for the wide receiver. Juju's isn't terrible if he can hit all his incentives, but it's it's a one-year prove-it deal for Juju where MVS has you know some stability for a couple years to be with the Kansas City Chiefs. Marquez, yeah, I mean, questionable hands and things like that. I understand that, but still is insanely fast and that's what that's what this offense runs on you need fast guys uh it, my the hard part here for me was Sky Moore who I thought was a it's an outstanding prospect very excited that he went to the Chiefs for dynasty reasons but like he's not big he's 5'10 195 yeah but his hands are gigantic <laughs> largest hands in the draft class Mike which that's that's great that's 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 really good stuff but like where he is, wouldn't you project him as a slot wide receiver? And Juju, where he has had kind of the success, you know, in his later career here as a slot wide receiver, I don't. It's it's hard to see them both coexisting. And on top of that, for the Kansas City Chiefs, as insanely good as as Mahomes has been for fantasy, you know, unlimited touchdowns. We have Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill. Those are the people who have been fantasy relevant. It's been two monster performers, and every time we want to, we're hopeful that McCole Hardman. This is going to be the year. He'll be the third piece. We've just we've never had a third piece here for the Kansas City Chiefs. So then that factors into your into the decision making as well of which guy are you going to go in on. Well, and, and McCall Harmon's name didn't even get brought up, but he is on this roster. Yes, he and, is, and he is he has been talked up by uh, Patrick Mahomes. Not that I read into any fantasy relevance, but it does show you that there is a big, there's a pool of players that may be all intermixed, and there could be, it could be very difficult to find the next man up to start on a consistent basis. We never got consistency from McCall Hardman, Sammy Watkins, Demarcus Robinson. If your name wasn't Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey, exactly, and that includes the backfield, you didn't know what you were getting on a weekly basis. So that is going to be a challenge. Um, you know, Darrell Williams has gone out of this backfield. Clyde Edwards-Alaire should have plenty of opportunities. Yes. Uh, but, you know, I when I watch Clyde Edwards play, he is he's he's a good player. Okay to good. Sure. He, he That's does fair. not have he does not have elite game breaking ability, in my opinion. He doesn't break he doesn't have breakaway runs, breakaway catches, and those are some of the things. You know, you take Tyree Kill out of this offense. Where are those coming right. for Patrick Mahomes, who was the quarterback one through week seven last year? Um, we know what he's capable of. 
And we know the volume will be there pass attempts wise, but it's just going to be a very interesting situation throughout the beginning of the year. Yeah, there's so much unknown here. And the nice thing is that historically, these guys play in the preseason. Andy Reid is not one of those who sits as guys. So this is the team to watch point. in the preseason to figure out what's going on. I, <clears throat> in the backfield, I'm still taking shots on Clyde Edwards-Alaire. He's dropped to the sixth round. Um, he could be supplanted by Ronald Jones. But Ronald Jones doesn't catch passes. There's vacated targets here. They're going to need to dump the ball to the running back a lot. And Clyde Edwards-Alaire should be the first man up. Late round flyers on Jarek McKinnon I'm fine with because in the playoffs when when Clyde Edwards-Alaire got back, and yes, he was off an injury, but he was available for two games. Jarek McKinnon ran ahead of him, averaged over 100 all-purpose yards per game in the playoffs and was outstanding. They brought him back on a nothing deal. Like Jarek McKinnon might not make the roster, but I think late round he's fine. I'm not really in on Ronald Jones that much just because he's not a pass catcher. And I think he'll rip off some chunk plays, but is he going to be able to establish something great for fantasy if he's not catching the ball in a shared backfield? I don't think so. Yeah, so Travis Kelsey, you can lock him into your lineup and feel confident. Uh, you can take shots at some of these wide receivers knowing that the passing volume in this offense and the quarterback – uh, is elite at cost. Who are you taking your shot on right now, Andy? You got to pick one from your redraft going into your your normal, you know, the league of record. Who are you taking? In half point? Yes. I guess I'll take my shot with Juju. Uh, Mike, MVS. Yeah, I, I am Juju as well. Yeah, it's close though. I I definitely, you know, do you want explosive plays? You're probably not getting those from Juju. Um, but, like, but you could get touchdowns. Yes, so I was gonna you say, could be that, all right there. That's where it comes down to. Juju could be 850 yards, Eight, 12 yeah, touchdowns. Yeah. Like it could be an outrageous uh, season for him. So you've got Rojo on a one year, right? Mm -hmm. I believe so. And yeah. you got Juju on a one year. Yeah, hmm, this is gonna be exciting. Uh, quick break. Back with the Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders were, I think, impressively 10-7 and seven last year going through so much tumult in this offense. They were, and th this is something I didn't realize because they were, you know, a solid team last year, 10-7. and seven. <laughs> Do you know their point differential? I'm no. guessing it was not impressive. It was negative. Yeah. The Chiefs, 12-5, and five, a point differential of 116. The Raiders, second in the division, 10-7. Mine is 65. Yeah, I mean, these... that is... That that is a stat that comes back to bite you in the butt. So does seven and two in one score games. So, yeah, so, so that's where it is. You yep. know, and and it's reflected again in the the win total is at eight and a half, which is down from where they finished. Um, they trailed in fifteen of their seventeen games, but still made the playoffs. Impressive. So there was a lot, but but you look at it and you say, hey, you overcame. To a degree, right? Like mm -hmm. those close games, despite a head coaching change, say, and a crazy season when it, with the management. So last year they were uh, 23rd in pace of play, 18th in points per game, 11th in total yards, 7th in pass attempts, 6th uh, in passing yards. Didn't run the ball a ton, uh, which was, you know, that's one of those things you were going into the season every year with the the Raiders and saying, here's what uh, John Gruden always does, right? He loves to establish it back when they had Marshawn Lynch and Josh Jacobs around the goal line. This was the establish it offense. But – now you come into the season with the biggest free agent or trade acquisition that you've ever had, Devontae Adams. He arrives and he stayed, unlike Antonio Brown, who arrived and, and they never got to see it. So I don't think those pass attempt numbers can go down this year for Derek Carr. I think they are going to necessarily be very high. Devontae Adams will demand a ton of targets. They have great weapons, and this is a defense that's not good enough to put them in a position to not throw the ball a ton in this division. No, they they did add Chandler Jones to the defense. They, they, they actually have some great pass rushers in this division as well, but their defense isn't good enough to to put them in constant leads in this division. They're going to be throwing a ton, and, and when you've got Hunter Renfro as your third option, he's going to be torching you know n nickel corners. Darren Waller can't be double teamed anymore. <laughs> oh, baby! Goo -goo -goo -goo. Great friend of the show. Um, so I, I do think that all three of these pieces are quality. Uh, I find myself more down on Devontae Adams 
than consensus rankings than where he goes in underdog uh, drafts. I don't see him. You know, a lot of people have him as that three, maybe even that fourth player. And statistically, I think he'll be very good. He'll he'll command the targets. I just don't know if the touchdowns are going to come his way the way that they have historically with Aaron Rodgers and the way that you need to replace that draft position. But is that foolish? Because you could argue he's the best wide receiver in the entire NFL. Well, let, let me read you some numbers, Jason. 22, 19, okay. 21, 27, 23. Okay, so those, some of those people can drink. Some of those people can't drink. That's right. That's it. That's okay. what I was explaining. No, those, those are the touchdown totals for Derek Carr over the last five years. So when you have pause about Devontae Adams' production – it's on the back of, look, you've got quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers is a guy that can throw 35, 40 touchdowns in a year. Derek Carr has yet to show us that. He had, his career high in touchdowns is 32. It was his second season in the NFL. So, you know, it's not disrespectful to Derek Carr or talking about Derek Carr to say you're not in the other echelon with the three, three quarterbacks in this division because you've never produced on that level or even close to it, from, especially from a touchdown total. You know, 23 touchdowns in 17 games last year. You know, if you're throwing barely over one touchdown a game, is it Renfro that game? Is it is it Darren Waller that game? There are reasons to have pause with the upside of Devontae Adams. I think PPR-wise, this guy's catching 10, 10 passes more often than not. But, yeah, I mean, you have a, a PPR weapon in Hunter Renfro, another third-down weapon. So I, I think it's fair. I do think he'll be good. But I think you, you guys, could end up burned. Where do you have Devontae Adams right now? Um, what a great question. Uh, <laughs> we have Devontae Adams. He's, he's sitting at five for me. And five for Jason. So I'm at three. Uh, Jefferson, Cup, Diggs, and Jamar Chase. I have those guys ahead of Adams. Yep. Uh, and those Mike the, Evans is right behind him. That, that's exactly how it is for me. Those those gotcha. four are in a different tier, though, for me. Like I, okay. you know, a lot of people see the Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase as a tier. I think Stephon Diggs is in that tier to me personally. And then it's it's a pretty big gap to me to go down to Devontae Adams. And, and honestly, when you look at Devontae Adams and Mike Evans, you know, Mike Evans could easily yeah. easily outscore him if even with far fewer receptions. If you're talking Mike Evans ends the season with 14, 15 yeah, touchdowns and Devontae Adams ends with eight touchdowns. I think Adams would catch 50 passes, 50 more passes than Mike Evans okay. in this offense. But I have him ahead of Jamar Chase, and some of it is going to be about what do you want. Like Devontae Adams is going to be very, very consistent in terms of a baseline Should of production, be, yeah. even if he doesn't score a bunch. Whereas Jamar Chase is going to have these explosive games. There may be T. Higgins type of games. Um, those guys are neck and neck to me. Stephon Diggs is in that mix. Uh, but I have, I do have Adams higher than than you two guys have him. Derek Carr. People want to know, will this rise the water level for Derek Carr? And it's certainly possible. But what is that? Is it thirty, thirty three touchdowns? Yeah, I was going to say where. So Derek Carr last year uh, completed four hundred and twenty eight passes, forty eight hundred yards. Still was not a top twelve quarterback. And for him to just get to like quarterback ten, he needed like seven more passing touchdowns last year to add onto those numbers because he doesn't do the other fantasy relevant stuff. And that that's just, that's how points are scored in fantasy running is, is rewarded more than throwing 4,800 yards. So can Devonte Adams take him from where the touchdowns that he had last year over that 30, 32 threshold? Maybe, it, maybe. I mean, maybe. it's a it's a little bit of a chicken or the egg question, right? We talk about oh, he hasn't been throwing t a lot of touchdowns last year, you know, twenty three touchdowns, but uh, he also had only Hunter Renfro for yeah, Waller his, was pretty banged, you up. know, for some of those lost Henry Ruggs. Uh, so, yeah. um, you know, a little bit of chicken or the egg, but this isn't going to change him into a first ballot Hall of Famer. So if he gets up twenty eight, twenty nine touchdowns, I think that's reasonable. Twenty eight, where I have him. I I believe that um, he is a fantastic quarterback two in a super flex league uh you know people aren't clamoring over themselves to get their car unless you're you know in a Raiders type league um but I, I think he'll be solid with these three weapons not great I think that's fair fair summation never had a three touchdown game last year yeah. which was crazy uh you look at other pass catching weapons Renfro will not be what he was last year uh the volume was it just it can't doesn't it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, Waller right now, I mean, look, if there's injuries, sure. But Renfro should be a – you're in a full PPR league. He's going to 
get his. Uh, it just the touchdowns will be hard to come by with the weapons they have now. And and you look at the backfield. Yes. Look, I, Josh Jacobs, the pendulum swinging so far, I'm starting to be more in on him <laughs> at his draft position. I know Brooks, you you know, uh, on our last mock or a couple mocks ago, your favorite pick of the draft was a later Josh Jacobs. Yeah, darn right. So, Ooh, darn you know, right. You, you know, got he, a darn right from yeah. Brooks. I mean, he, watch just the potty the, mouth. He might have more Thank scoring you. opportunities with Adams there. Just the offense is, is better. Just... Yeah, I think there's a lot of upside there. It's it's very difficult because Josh okay. Jacobs is. Wait, what are you, what are we cackling about? Well, you you said what did you say to Brooks just now? You said watch the language. Yeah. Uh, you know, Al Borland and I were in a pickleball tournament this past weekend, uh -huh. and one of us got a verbal warning for, oh, <laughs> for our I'm language. It was not you. It actually was. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I had to Fashion argue. Overtake. I had to argue with the ref though. I still insist. I said shoot. But Ooh, but it's in, it's okay. in debate. I've never been publicly warned. Like I guess like we could have given up a point or something. Um, but what? yeah, I don't know. Oh, get get out of here! I that. know. Uh, but, but so back to Josh. Jacobs. Yeah, he, he's going four eleven right now, almost in the fifth round in certain certain leagues. But even still, the look he has he has been solid. Like at the end of the year, I mean, he's been a top twenty running back each of his three years. Running back eight in two thousand twenty. The pass catching, like the, the receptions were finally there this past year. But now you have a whole new scheme. You have a whole new system here. And Josh McDaniels is bringing probably that Patriot running back system over here. And I mean, didn't we have recently a, a reporter was saying they'll probably rebuild be, the whole, like, be very, very careful for fantasy football because they are going to have the specialized situations for all of these running backs. It, I mean, of all of them, Jacobs profiles as as the 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 goal line running back. So, if, like Brooks, you're talking about your hope is that the scoring opportunities are there. Then Jacobs is in play for me. But with Kenyon Drake, is looks like he is back. They've made some other additions for the at, into the running back room. Like they brought Brandon Bolden over there with them. I know, but I I drafted think Zamir White. I lean on the some of that stuff's going to end up smoke because Josh Jacobs was a 64 target running back last year he's good in that aspect oh, yes. of the game we've begged for it for he's, years he's never not been a top 20 running back yeah and you start looking you know you you started talking about specialization i'm starting to think of you know josh jacobs and where is um where's antonio gibson going in drafts where's what's his adp kyle do you have it right around there right around the same spot so i mean when you look at that which guy do you lean which direction do you lean where Gibson's probably a first and second down guy. He's been dealt dealt with more injuries than Jacobs has. And the offense in Las Vegas should be much better than it is in Washington. Where do you lean between those two players? It's 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 really tough because when you bring those two names up, I, I lean towards Gibson just naturally wanting the um Youth? The, the more youth? supreme they're athlete, young. they're 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 both uh, decently youthful. Although it does feel different, but when you <laughs> decently youthful, <laughs> when when hey, you lay, you're decent, you're yeah. decent on the youth side. When you lay out the two situations and you say, okay, well, Antonio Gibson has really been a touchdown guy. Uh, that's where his they're fantasy the same values, age, by the way. They're has, both exactly youthful. They're decently, <laughs> they're decently youthful. Um, the you know. The situation, who's going to catch more passes, is almost certainly going to be Josh Jacobs. Who gets more touchdown opportunity, that could be a coin flip between yeah. them. Um, so, I, I, you know, it's it's funny because I don't look at those guys with the same outlook, like uh, just, you know, my optimism. But I think Josh Jacobs might be a better pick. That being said, this yep. is the area of drafts where I'm generally not drafting running backs because there's great wide receivers yeah. and there's these question mark running backs where you could go, okay, well, he's always been you know, a top 20 guy, but I don't think he's going to continue, continue an upward trajectory in receiving when you add Devontae Adams and have Darren Waller healthy. And you know, last year, we just talked about you, you lose rugs, you don't have Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro's your main guy. Well, of course, Josh Jacobs caught more passes. Right. No, it's fair. And he was, he was the RB14 last year, and he missed two full games. So he had a good season. Um. He's being drafted at RB twenty three. So first, per I have him ranked sake, higher I, than that. So yeah, I guess okay. ADP wise, I'm in. But I mean, those running back in the dead zone in that fourth round, it historically is 
doesn't work out very well for most of those running backs. Are you in on Darren Waller in the fourth round? Yes. Okay. Uh, Jason has more of a maybe not. Yeah, I do think he's face. going to a be. Maybe not face. Uh, it's, it is a maybe not. I I do think Darren Waller will be very good. He's he's my tight end six right now. I think he'll have enough uh, receptions. I don't want to take a guy who doesn't have a chance to be the difference maker at that position in the fourth, fifth round. Like when I'm taking one of those high end tight ends, I want a guy that I think could finish the years of the tight end one. And I, I don't think Darren Waller could do that with Devonte Adams on the team. So I would rather go late round, but that's not saying I think he's going to have a bad season. I just don't think he's got the upside worthy of his draft capital. The chargers were nine and eight last year. They hit their projected uh, Vegas win total from 2021. It's up to 10 this year for Los Angeles. And uh, there's a lot of continuity. Uh, the head coach, the offensive coordinator, the wide receivers, the running backs, they're all back. The offensive line improved. They want to protect their gym. What if they don't win this year? I mean, this is a team Any that... games? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, this is a team that last year was everybody's and you gotta dark get to horse... 10. Everybody's dark horse, you know, Super Bowl sure. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. pick. They're going to be people's Super Bowl pick again this year, and they've got the great next big thing in uh, Justin Herbert. But it's a tough division. If they don't make the playoffs again, yeah, oh, there's just... some stagnation issue there. Um, but we're not going to talk about negatives here, Jason. We're going to oh, talk okay, about positives. Okay. They're going to win the Super Bowl. Second in pace of play, fifth in points per game, fourth in total yards, third in pass attempts, second in passing yards. Um, Juicy. Look, yeah. It, it, yeah, Staley it, is the hero we all deserve. I mean, Justin Herbert finished on fire. He was the quarterback three at eight straight top 12 weeks in a row. Um, he has the most completions, attempts, passing yards, passing touchdowns for any quarterback through the first two years in the NFL. Uh, he's completing, I think, as a rookie, 66% of his passes last year, right at that same number. Crazy. Uh, he, he has been absolutely unstoppable and a delight for fantasy players. And so you don't need us necessarily to tell you about the staples of this offense. Justin Herbert, great quarterback going in the late third. I don't really mind it that much. Um, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, oh man, both great receivers in a great offense. And Austin Eckler last year was the RB four. He had 20 red zone touchdowns. Yeah, eight receiving touchdowns, which he has, in fact, done before. Uh, I would still bet against that. Eckler is – I feel like uh, Austin Eckler is one of the hardest decisions of the first round to me because if if you get anything close to what he was last year, you, you've you returned easily on, on that first round pick and you were just so happy about it. But like comparing him and – the volatility that I think could be there with the addition of Isaiah Spiller coming in. The, the Chargers have, with their actions, have said they really want a compliment to Austin Eckler. They don't want it to be the situation it was last year. And there's a lot of people that love Spiller, despite him being a day three pick. But can, like, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, like, these guys are going to be high end, locked in, minimal risk. How do you compare that to taking Eckler in the first round? Well, I, it's a it's a fair question. I think there's some hesitation for people about it. Yes, I have. I've just and you said that with their actions, the Chargers, you know, went out and got Isaiah Spiller. It's also their words. They went out and talked about his versatility, how often he was out there on third downs, pass protection in college. He was a player who, on film, I really loved. But the draft capital brought pause about him. Those are the names I actually wanted to talk about. Was in particular the new additions: Isaiah Spiller in the backfield, Josh Palmer, who even this morning a yep. uh, a news alert about him establishing himself as the wide receiver three. We got a we got a best friend narrative going on, and oh. <gasps> not not best friend, but like a, coffee and, and but just okay, no donuts coffee. that he like he's always the one at the end of like trade practice is over. He's out there repping with Herbert. Okay, well that's I, that's meaningless. That's it's not breakfast. No, it's not breakfast. It's, it's okay. got to be sharing okay. a meal. This has to be outside or of some football. Fro -yo this or is something. where it starts, yeah. though, fellas. Your practice is over. You're just you're getting some reps. Hey, you want to go get some dude? Do you want to? We should get some. We should get a smoothie. Oh yeah, we should smoothie up. If they if they you got to do that for three days in a row. 
Three smoothies? You're on fire? Because it's got to be a routine. Yeah, 100%. Um, Cooper it, Cup and Stafford, they were not getting breakfast once a week. No, right. that's that's they're doing everything together. They they uh, live next door to each other. A lot of people don't know that now. Um, so, but then the other name, I'm gonna throw Gerald Everett because I, I was setting yes, a table for you. All the new additions to this offense that was so powerful. Yep, uh, I love it. Let's keep on Isaiah Spiller for a second because he was a person that most all projections had him projected to go in the second round for m most of the year. His production was great in uh, college. I liked his film a lot. Andy did. Mike did not like his film quite as much. Um, but he was someone that was projected. I saw Mike as a day three guy. Sure, sure. And and then he ran slow at the combine, and that crushed his draft capital. Uh, he f plummeted in the draft. But the fact that he is a a a, a bigger bodied three down back coming in, I think they're going to use him uh, a good amount. So this, I don't view him as someone that is going to ruin Austin Eckler. I don't think he's going to come in and take eight touchdowns away from Eckler and Eckler is going to be a bust of a first round pick. I do view him as someone that could have a little bit of standalone value just because of how good this offense is. If he ends up being the other main guy, if they basically go to a two back system and then obviously in this world of running back health, should something happen to Eckler, Isaiah Spiller is interesting. So as a 10th round flyer, in your double-digit rounds, I, I'm fine drafting Isaiah Spiller, even though I don't usually love day three NFL draft capital picks at running back. Yeah, and I mean, I can keep the question simple. Are any of the new arrivals or uh, up-and-coming players outside of Eckler, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams going to make a fantasy impact? Are you going to get value from Gerald Everett at the tight end He's, position? He is interesting. It, what's, what's difficult for Everett is that you have like three high end known pass catching options between Eckler, Allen, and Williams. But he checks some of the boxes of like what you're looking for. Uh we, we know that the tight ends last year had a twenty one percent target share. Uh it was Cook last year, right? Remember yeah, Jared yeah, Cook Jared. last year and just I mean, he was he was done. Gerald Everett is not done. He's he's a, like a a very gifted athlete. And he now, he's now tied to an offense that's going to have 40-plus passing touchdowns. So he is – he's one of the sneaky late-round guys that I'm okay drafting. Yeah, it's it's one of those – so I talked about I, I don't take Waller just because of the sacrifice of the running back or wide receiver right. there. Um, I've gone many drafts and used my last pick in the draft – if Cole Komet falls, which some leagues he yeah, does, I'd rather have Komet. Uh, sure, I, I would too. In you know, in in um, most home leagues, but he you know, in underdog where you know we've talked about drafting maybe three late tight ends, he, he is my highest exposure player right now at thirty four point eight percent. Wow, so I, I I think the touchdowns come. I don't know that you can necessarily easily in your home league project which week he's going to get touchdowns, but he could you know Dawson Knox last year was a late round guy who just caught a ton of touchdowns he was from a Josh Allen. Guy. And that's kind of what I could see happening for Gerald Everett. I think it's a really good comparison with Dawson Knox. There's an article on the website, Gerald Everett, a history of tight ends coming out of nowhere for fantasy. You can check out if you want to read more about Everett's upside. Um, it's hard with Gerald Everett because he's not delivered on some pretty good offenses in the yeah. past. Uh, there was optimism around, you know, Russ last year too. He's had a lot of letdown. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of <laughs> the same as what Jared Cook was doing for years. I mean, who was their tight end last year who – Currently, I don't think has a job. Correct. So, we'll see. Uh, I do like Josh Palmer, but I think Everett, Palmer, Spiller, these are guys that are going to be intermittently relevant mm -hmm. for fantasy. Uh, I think we, as a trifecta, are highest in the industry on Mike Williams as yes. a whole. I think he can end up definitely a top 10 wide receiver this year. Uh, he made. He's not just a big play guy anymore. He does have those, but his average depth of target – he was a much better intermediate route runner last year. He was a much more reliable third down target. Um, he did have a, a tale of two seasons, really. He came and, and set a standard for well, himself that was unmatchable for the rec rest of the year. There was that, and just the, the way that they were using him in play calling was they changed it up in the middle of the season. I'd, so it, maybe they'll go back to where he was having such success. But I he will have ebbs and flows, absolutely, but I think – You'll be at his ADP. I'm I'm all in. Yeah, and what what happened last year too with Mike Williams was he came out, made a statement for fantasy, 
And then he dealt with some injuries that were limiting him. They weren't taking him off the field, but it was limiting him. And you didn't see consistency until the end of the year when he came up big in big games again, that amazing shootout with the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Um, I think you're going to see – they came out and they said, hey, we're going to give you a pile of money exactly. for three years and make you a an important part of the offense. <laughs> I forgot. He had 17 targets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this I'd, is, I'd like that every week, please. This is he, he's dra I draft him almost every single time I'm in a draft because I just have him finishing much higher than where he's being yep. taken. Uh, the Broncos were uh, dead last in the division, but at a you know not so bad seven and ten. They came into the season with an eight and a half uh, projected win total, but uh, Drew couldn't lock that down, and hey we ended up with uh, you know seven wins. They started the season three and zero. Oh, but it was against the Giants, the Jags, and the Jets, which if I could play them The every three Jays, yeah. as we call them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But it was not fun. It was not fun watching the Broncos last year. This was 71% of their games hit the under. It was bad football, I mean, terrible offense. That one week with Javante, that was, that was pretty fun. 31st in pace of play, Mike. 24th in pass attempts. 23rd in points per game, and none of it matters because they're coming into the season with a 10-game projected win total and a new quarterback, none other than Russell Wilson. Unlimited. <laughs> what a dork. <laughs> uh, Dude, the tweet. When I text you, phone emoji, that means we're dialed in. Like, what is Please don't tweet anymore. Where's his PR people? Don't, he doesn't have any. He fired them. Clearly. All. Well, he hired himself. He puts a hat on. He's like, let me ask my PR department. He is the type of person that would absolutely put a different hat on. <laughs> like that. Like you joke, but I'll bet he has got at least a spot in his house where he does his this, this type of thinking. It's where I'm going to do my tweets. Well, I mean, he's unlimited in his skills and abilities. And the truth is, as fun as it is to poke fun. And it's fun. He brings... A completely new offense to the table in Denver. They are, I mean, we've said it for a year and a half. The pieces that they were putting around their quarterback, it was like, yeah, why not go to Denver? Anybody that wanted out of where they're at, why not go to Denver and play with two outstanding running backs and Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon? Um, you know, a wide receiver room that's got Cortland Sutton, who's a six four behemoth, uh, Jerry Judy, uh, super talented, young, up and coming wide receiver, Tim Patrick, who all you know, Fireball, Fireball Jones. Jones. I, it's ironic because he's Keaton. just old reliable. Really, he's just such a reliable target. And then you know, KJ Hamler, if he gets involved at some point during this season as a burner, you got good tight ends, Albert Goebenam. Greg Dulcich, it's all there for Russell Wilson, mm -hmm. and he's been in the kitchen. Ooh. Getting wait, ready, wait, wait, getting ready to, cook? to cook, man. Yeah. So this is the Russell Wilson story to me. That's, what, that's where my fantasy focus really is. It's on Russell Wilson and what that ceiling could really be. He's drafted as the QB9. Right. That seems like the pick. Like, Russ is starting to stand out as the quarterback pick in fantasy this year i am i am starting to move that way as well like okay quarterback nine historically yeah he did not hit it this year because he got the hand injury came back maybe too early but for sure too early okay. like i don't want the narrative to be like may, you, if you don't remember yeah he got this hand injury where he was supposed to be out a long time but he's russell wilson so he's like i won't be out a long time i'm back and there's no problem with my hand except i will not throw it like you've ever seen me throw the ball before i have no accuracy and i suck but just it's it's definitely not the hand i mean he he was not himself at all that hand injury was legit and russell wilson limited for all, for all the for all the jokes and not and they won't ever stop dude is such a good quarterback yeah so quarterback nine you'd have to go back to his rookie season for a time that he was not quarterback nine or better i mean he's, he's going he's, to he's dominate so outrageously in good he, he's in an offense that is not being you know the caboosed by uh, uh pete carroll trying to bring his 1980s establish the run offense and you got Nathaniel Hackett like you have some really interesting stuff coming in here from from a play calling perspective 
I am with you, Andy, that the more time goes on and that, that Russ continues to stay at what I consider to be a, an 8 AP budget, I, I'm going to be trying to draft him everywhere. It is not unreasonable to make the comparison to Peyton Manning's arrival in Denver. Uh, yeah, I Where agree. you had a Demarius Thomas that had not reached his potential. You had an Eric Decker. You had Sanders. Julius Thomas that had came out of nowhere. Right. Emmanuel Sanders. You know, you're, you're in a division where two of the three teams you're playing against were 26th and 29th in points against. So there's four matchups that are juicy just right out of the gate. So there's a lot of, like, at QB9... Could Russ finish the quarterback one? Yes, he could. Yes, I think he can. So you're kind of almost looking at that value of where can you draft somebody that can be the breakout wide receiver or quarterback candidate, and Russ has a lot to prove. Sure. From yeah, yeah, a yeah. running the offense that way, maybe maybe more interceptions come his way. It That's might fine. not matter. And he can still move and give you 300 on the ground. So, um, you know, we'll probably debate all – off season on what we think that means for the wide receiver room. Um, I expect this to be the Russell Wilson party. Everyone's invited. Yeah, that's true. Um, he didn't just invite Cortland to the party, but um, Cortland is being drafted the highest of the wide receiver options. So uh, actually, is that not true? Is Judy past him? They're very neck and neck depending on where you're drafting. So do who do you prefer? I mean, Mike, you're on Team Sutton. I I am on Team Cortland Sutton. I know it's been a, a few years since we've seen Cortland Sutton from the breakout year, but just remember the story of Cortland. It was I mean high draft capital, second year has a true breakout campaign with essentially Joe Flacco, the one who is supplying all of that. We're excited for him headed to the next year. Tears his ACL. So that this past year of 2021. That was his first year back from the ACL recovery, and we know that generally when a player, their first year back off the ACL, you can expect a dip in production. Look look at uh, uh, Allen Robinson. <clears throat> Very similar. Terrace's, Allen Robinson tore his ACL in, in week one for the Jaguars. Uh, comes back, is not, he doesn't put up huge numbers, and then the following two seasons was a top 10 wide receiver. And so I just, with his skills and ability matching uh, with what Russ does, like Cortland Sutton is, while he's big and huge, like he's also a he is a deep field guy. Like his a dot is fantastic. So that's just that's where I prefer to go. That's and that is not me saying I'm out on Jerry Judy. It's just that you got to pick between the two of them, and I pick Cortland Sutton. Yeah, I don't, I don't I don't believe you have to pick between the two of them. I think that they can both be Are great. You draft them both. I, well, I mean, that's what I mean. Sure, if you're if you if they're right next to each other, they're on the clock. I'm going Cortland Sutton first, but I am in on both players. I don't personally see this as one of those situations where every single decent weapon is going to be involved. I think Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy are a tier above. We saw this in 2020, where both Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf were top 12 wide receiver options and and that year you know they had David Moore as a field stretching guy who got some bomb touchdowns and you'll have Tim Patrick have some stuff but I I think that those are the two pieces that I want I have uh, a lot of shares of both Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy they've they play different roles but I'm I'm in on them personally well there's been talk too of Jerry Judy being um you know I'm, I'm curious what the two wide receiver sets will look like in Denver <clears throat> Because I think there's a decent chance it's going to be Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick um, on the outside when there's two when there's just two wideouts out there, which will not be very often. Yeah, but I mean, different. This is Hackett coming in, so. But we'll I don't. See. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to throw Tim Patrick by the wayside, which is what sure. they do in drafts because he has been a a really reliable pass catcher, um, and he's free. So you you can pay up for Jerry Judy. You can pay up for Cortland Sutton. Or you can have a free Tim Patrick, and you know Russ's agenda is not a name to fill out. His agenda is, you know, to get the ball into the end zone, and he's always shown that he's willing to do that mm -hmm. um, with whomever. And then you have Javante and Melvin, mm -hmm. who are. It's tough. It's tough because Javante is being drafted well ahead of Melvin Gordon, and yet you know you're going to roll your eyes and be frustrated if you take Javante Williams at important key situations, goal line situations, third downs, where you're wishing he was out there and he won't be. I I, I 
it's really weird with the gap between these two players. You're talking about a, a back of the second round versus a ninth round pick that I actually am fine with taking both of these guys, not necessarily on the same team. Sure. But it's one of those things where I think the upside of Javante, where he's being drafted, there's been times where I'm drafting him ahead of even where I have him ranked just because you, you see the pathway. Should he get the lion's share? Should a Melvin Gordon injury happen? He has talent like very few NFL players have. So I don't have any problem taking that shot on a young, up-and-coming superstar running back. But at the same time, the value is much better on Melvin Gordon, who probably will be in at least a 40% timeshare here. And he's going as the running back 37 despite being great last year. Yeah, it, it makes for a difficult decision. We wanted the clear path when Melvin was a free agent. We had the clear path. And J Javante would have been a, a much higher pick. Yeah, he would. He would have been a first-round pick. So, Mike, do you do you are you willing to pay up for that Javante price? I am. I, I've done it in a couple spots already. It, it, it I, when it comes to running back, you want youth, talent, and like all the boxes are checked here. I get that Melvin Gordon will be involved, but new new regime here, so it, we're not exactly sure how the timeshare will shake out. Javante is just so good. I mean, sixth and fourth missed tackles. He's he is. He is an elite running back to me. No, I, th I no, I think it's, I think it's more than just you. I think it's an NFL player consensus that he is in that upper echelon from a talent uh, side. I think he's a top five talent. He's I'll great. put it that way. Yeah. Um, who wins the division? This one is the most fun to. Oh man! Bring to the table here. Who wins the AFC West? Sponsored by Michael W. Smith. <laughs> I really want for West. to yeah. say Denver because I think they've got the most talented roster front to back. But so you much, are in control of whether you say yeah, it or not. Yeah. So much, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Denver then. I will take Denver. Okay, Jason officially Denver. Mike, uh, I'll take Denver. I will make a decision. <laughs> On next episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. It's difficult. Um, I guess I will say the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. I, mean, I was between those two. Yeah, but then I want to say Chargers. Too. Everyone like, wants to say Chargers. Char uh, toughest player to project. And, say, and my ticket stub wants it to be the Raiders. <laughs> right. Uh, toughest player to project in the division. I have a hard time with Zamir White, knowing what they're going to do with the running sure. back situation with Josh Jacobs. I... I feel like I have no idea what to do with him. Rookie running back for the Raiders. And okay. I didn't, Hunter Renfro. Yeah, I was going to say Renfro. The dude can ball, but <laughs> the, the math of Darren Waller getting 20-plus percent, Devontae Adams should see 25, maybe 30 percent of the targets. And it's, it's hard to see it happening. All right, and a sneaky player to add for maybe a dynasty league. Uh, I'll throw Jalen Guyton out there. Wide receiver for the Chargers. Everybody's going to be in on Josh Palmer in a sure. dynasty league. So Jalen Guyton will probably have his games this year. He is a burner. Uh, he's been on the receiving end of some uh, absolute moon balls from Justin Herbert. Uh, uh, I go. Got, I'm going to go. Oh no, 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 no! Please go. I've got the best one. Oh, save uh, it for last. Okay, I'm going to uh, Greg Dulcich, tight end for the Denver Broncos. Who? Yeah, I mean, he's he's tied to Russell Wilson now for his rookie contract. Physically? Yes. Okay. Yeah, three-legged race champions. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, I'm going to go with a superstar. Uh-oh. Justin Watson. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah. Is, is he in this division? Uh, he Is he in this division? I, I literally have no idea what, what team is he on. Justin Watson is, he on? is he on? on the Kansas City Chiefs, has gotten so much <laughs> smoke. The, the latest athletic yeah, report. Out, the yeah. latest show. athletic I'm, report I'm had him making out. the roster. Had him making the roster? <laughs> Justin Watson, baby, superstar. All right, that is it for today's show. Back on Thursday. Take Goodbye. care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.